Hi folks, thanks for joining me. You can see I've got a little RCA 8X541 back on the bench and it's untouched since the introduction. So I've got the uh, same capacitors, resistors in here. I did uh, cut the uh, line cord off and since that point I elected to uh, splice it back together here using some wire nuts. The purpose of this video and some of the upcoming videos in this series, we're going to do a cause and effect. So I don't recommend this process, but uh, we're going to try to bring this radio up using an isolation transformer again because this chassis is hot and a variac. And I'll monitor uh, current and voltage as we do so. We'll start out looking at the uh, B plus power supply. We want to look at the uh, DC voltages back over to the uh, plate of the tubes in addition to uh, AC ripple. Again, if you uh, follow these practices or procedures, uh, you're doing so at your own risk. Again, we're dealing with uh, potentially lethal voltages. And again, I am using an isolation uh, transformer as well. So let's kick things off here. Looking at the B-plus supply, we'll look at uh, the DC voltages and compare those voltages that we read at a couple different points to what's called out on the schematic itself and then uh, we'll look at um, AC ripple on the oscilloscope and then knowing that this electrolytic needs to be replaced we'll uh, get it swapped out and then we'll repeat those measurements and see if there's any notable improvement and then we'll just keep working ourselves back through the circuit uh, one section at a time Appreciate you guys uh, joining me on this journey. So before we look at voltages and ripple, just doing a little due diligence here and looking at this uh, capacitor. You can see the uh, ground side here. And again, this is a floating ground in this uh, radio. I'll pull up the uh, schematic here and you guys will see that. The uh, chassis ground is uh, denoted as such. And then the uh, circuit ground for the uh, B minus is noted as such. And then you'll see this is a dual electrolytic capacitor with the uh, yellow lead being the 50 microfarad and the red lead being 30. So uh, just looking at this, this thing is wired incorrectly. Of course, the floating ground appears to be correct, but the yellow lead that's been spliced here, you can see goes down to the uh, 35 Z5 rectifier ties into the uh, cathode pin number 8 here and uh, that's actually uh, incorrect that's the uh, input filter and that should be the uh, 30 microfarad excuse me 30 microfarad side and the 50 microfarad side should tie back in here to the uh, 50 L6 on the other side of the uh, power resistor here so um, we already know just the way it's wired that um, it's uh, inaccurate and uh, that would lead to uh, more ripple as well. Of course, you can see the condition of this uh, electrolytic here. I'll do a, a little picture in picture here and show it a little closer. It's in uh, really bad shape. So let me see if I can safely bring this up um, ever so slowly. And then again, we'll look at uh, DC voltage and um, AC ripple. And then we'll go in and get uh, this electrolytic replaced with two modern day electrolytic capacitors and then uh, repeat those tests and uh, just see what differences we get. Alright, I'll go ahead and bring this up. And I'm watching uh, current over here off to the side. And the uh, line voltage on this particular radio is spec'd out at uh, 115. So we'll try to go back and emulate the original uh, AC or DC input. So I'm reading about uh, 0.19 amps of current on the AC side at 115 volts and you can see here I have uh, 59 volts here on my B plus back over to uh, pin number four on the 50L6. So again, that's grid two or the uh, screen grid. 
And if you go back here and look at the schematic here, let me uh, just pull it back up. Looks like we should have, what, uh, 90 volts at this point. So you can see our B plus voltage um, is impaired here at that point. Let's move back uh, down to the uh, rectifier itself and look at the uh, voltage on the uh, cathode of the uh, 35Z5. And just see what we have at that location. Okay, you can see I've moved the meter over here so we can look at the uh, first input filter itself. And again, I had already mentioned it looks like the wiring of the capacitor itself, input versus output uh, electrolytic, is uh, swapped. But uh, you can also see that our voltage here, B plus, is low. If you look at the schematic itself, you know, you can see we're looking at uh, 91, 92 volts. So uh, let me disconnect the uh, voltmeter here. And we'll switch on the oscilloscope and take a look at the uh, AC ripple for both of these locations. And then we'll go back in and swap out the electrolytic capacitor after we uh, bleed it off and uh, get those uh, two capacitors swapped out and uh, repeat the uh, results. Then we can see if we've got additional loading on the circuit coming from these other uh, capacitors or if the problem itself was uh, more isolated to the original uh, electrolytic here that's uh, had its better days. We're looking at the ripple now. I'm off of that uh, 50L6 uh, tube, pin number four of the uh, screen grid. And again, you can see I have my oscilloscope here, AC coupled. And uh, you can see the uh, voltage uh, peak to peak, a little over uh, 12 volts. Again, that's with a 115 volts uh, AC applied to the uh, power supply itself. Let's uh, move down to the uh, 35Z5 and uh, look at uh, pin number 8, the cathode. That would be the uh, input filter. And uh, you would expect, of course, the uh, ripple to be much higher on that particular uh, input stage. But again, after we uh, swap these out, we'll go back and uh, repeat the test so we can understand uh, cause and effect. You can see the uh, ripple uh, rising here as I bring the uh, voltage up to the uh, receiver. Okay, we're back at our 115 volts AC, and you can see the, uh, again, the uh, ripple here. Again, this being a half-wave rectifier, you can see our ripple is at uh, 60 hertz. RMS, 21.4, and our voltage peak-to-peak -peak, uh, ripple on the AC side, again, being coupled here. AC-wise, at uh, almost 69 volts. All right, let's uh, power this thing off, bleed off the uh, capacitor. I'll go ahead and swap that off, or swap it out offline. And then uh, we'll come back and uh, repeat the uh, B-plus measurements and see what we have. Okay, you can see I've got the uh, O-scope here tied into uh, the 50L6 uh, pin 4, the uh, screen grid. Let's jump back up to the oscilloscope now and look at Ripple. You can see how clean everything looks now compared to what we had. When we measured this before, we had, uh, let's see, looking at my notes, about 12 volts uh, peak to peak ripple. Now we're uh, less than one volt. So you can see maybe peaking around uh, 640 millivolts or 0.64 volts. So uh, nice and clean compared to what we had before. And if you're listening to the audio here on the radio, you really don't hear that uh, AC hum that we heard before. So that's a great sign. Let me uh, move down to uh, pin 8, the cathode of the 35Z5, and uh, just take a look at it there as well. Again, we'll see more ripple in that point. That'll be the input uh, filter capacitor. 
So I would expect a, a higher amount of ripple at that point, but it should still be improved over what we uh, saw before, which was uh, 69 volts peak to peak. Okay, you can see I've got the uh, meter uh, or the oscilloscope probe down here moved down to the uh, cathode of the 35Z5. Let's uh, glance back now at the oscilloscope. 19.6 volts peak to peak and before we were reading uh, 69 volts peak to peak AC ripple. So uh, just a huge improvement here. Again this being that uh, first filter cap right off of the uh, rectifier tube. So uh, we've made a, a significant improvement and uh, you can just tell by listening to the receiver now you've got a lot less uh, hum of course. So um, Let's take a look real quick at the uh, electrolytic that I pulled out on the uh, LCR meter. Let's just see what the capacitance of that uh, capacitor or dual capacitor actually is. So let's get this uh, capacitor here hooked up. We'll check the uh, red side first, the uh, 30 microfarad side, and see what we get. And uh, totally amazing if that's showing up, 504, 505 nanofarads. So that would only be uh, 0.51 or just over one half microfarad. So uh, no wonder the uh, radio was performing so bad. Just shows you how these old aging uh, capacitors here, they lose their capacitance, uh, leaky, shorted, all the above and they should always be uh, replaced in all this uh, vintage gear. Let's move over here to the 50 microfarad side and uh, it's actually even worse. Let's see. Yep. So reading uh, 412 nanofarads which would be what 0.4 microfarads so uh, just incredibly how poor this uh, capacitor is just completely uh, dried up and useless. All right, folks, that concludes, uh, let's see, part one of this series. We'll come back and do some more B-plus uh, checks at some of the other tubes and just take note of those before we make any additional changes just to see how close we are. And then uh, we'll uh, start working probably in the audio section, that uh, output uh, tube, and start getting uh, the resistors checked and the uh, capacitors replaced and uh, just look and see if there's any notable performance. Again, just looking for uh, kind of lessons learned, uh, cause and effect. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Until the uh, next part, you guys uh, take care, stay well.